Greetings, I am Herbert Erbaderb, and today I'm going to build this M5 Stuart light tank from Warlord Games. This is a 28mm or 156 scale plastic wargaming kit suitable for any wargame in this scale, unless of course you don't need an M5, I guess. As the box tells us, you can build this kit in multiple ways, as the regular M5 Stuart light tank, the M5A1, or the E7-7 mechanised flamethrower. The back of the box has some information on the vehicle. It also shows a few images of built and painted examples of the kit, including crew figures. And you can see a picture of the included decals, stat cards and damage markers. At this point, I think it's worth mentioning that I am in fact a Warlord Games affiliate. If you're interested in purchasing this kit for yourself, there's a link in the description that you could use that would give me a small monetary bonus. There's no extra cost to you, so why not help a starving Herbert Erbaderp? You're not starving! Well, no, but I'm starving for more models. It's the same thing. No it isn't. Well, I guess not. Anyway, inside the box we get this little bundle of stuff. Very descriptive, Herbert. There are two sprues here moulded in a grey plastic. The plastic in this kit is made by SK Toolings and not Italeri. That does mean you can't buy an Italeri boxing of this model because they don't make it, but that's okay. I think both manufacturers are good, but they do tend to be slightly different. These sprues are nice and neat, and I couldn't find any major defects or moulding errors. One of the first things I noticed on this sprue is that the tracks are almost a single piece. This is often not the case in Warlords kits, but I do appreciate this. I think they look quite good, and later you'll see just how easily they go together. There's also some crew figures, four of them in fact, and they look pretty good too. I kind of like how the one on the left seems to be doing a sick DJ set. Two of these do have some slight sync marks on their backs, but that should be pretty easy to fix, and depending on where you put the figures, it might not even be visible. That was about the only problem I found with this plastic. There's not a huge number of parts in this kit, but there's obviously enough parts to cover the various options you can make, so you'll have some stuff left over for the bits box. That's always a positive in my eyes. This is the second sprue, and if you look at it you'll notice that there are more turret parts here. I'm pretty sure that you could build two entire turrets with this kit. I didn't try it, but it looks like you could. The details on this kit are pretty good, though you do have to keep in mind that this is a gaming kit. It's designed to be handled a lot, so some of the detail is going to be omitted, and some of it is going to be a little bit more chunky than on the real thing. That's because the average wargamer doesn't really want fine details to be constantly broken off their model. It's disruptive to games and just annoying. Still, the detailing looks pretty good to me. I quite like the upper hull part, especially the grills in the engine deck. Very nice. The instructions are pretty good, as I would expect from Warlord. The first couple of pages have sprue guides, and here's one of the things I didn't like about the sprues or the instructions. There are no markings on the sprue or sprue guides at all, and I think that's a bit of an oversight. Fortunately, the parts the instructions reference are pretty obvious, so there was a minimum of confusion, but it's still a bit annoying. The instructions are easy enough to follow, there isn't too much going on in any single step, and they make it clear which parts should be added for what variant of the tank. I also like that there's a couple of painted examples shown through the instructions. The decal sheet has quite a few marking choices. There's options for British, Soviet and American M5s. We also get these stat cards. I like these because they're handy for forgetful folks like myself, and can be used as a quick reference for how your tank moves and what it can do in battle. There's obviously one for the M5A1 and one for the flamethrower version. I'm assuming this means there's no difference, at least not stat-wise, between the two M5 variants that you can build with this kit. There's also another one of these little damage marker kits that I can add to my collection. I don't use these because I have different markers, but I do think it's a very nice little inclusion. And that's what's in the box. Now it's time to glue some bits of plastic together. I start with the tracks, because that's what the instructions wanted. I wouldn't want to upset the instruction police now, would I? It probably won't come as any kind of shock when I say that these are pretty easy to put together. You add the lower run of tracks, making sure that the little recess on the inside goes towards the front. I apply some pressure to make sure that things stay where they should, then I add the small bit of track. 
This has a little tab that links into the recess I mentioned a moment ago, so that's the way this should be facing. The result is really good, even better than I was expecting. You can barely see where the parts join together. Then, why not join the upper and lower hull together? These pretty much just drop right together. It's probably even easier than it looks. I did add glue before putting these together, but I felt like a little bit more glue just to be sure I wouldn't be smited by the glue god was not a bad idea. Adding the tracks seemed like a pretty sensible next step, so I did. This is made nice and simple thanks to that recess into which the tracks will sit nice and neatly. If you wanted to, you could probably put the tracks on backwards. I mean, if you really wanted to, but you don't want to do that, do you? People will mock you, they'll say backwards tracks, backwards tracks, na 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 na, or something. How hurtful that would be. Once we have both sets of tracks in place, the hull looks mostly completed. However, the more astute amongst you will notice that there's something missing from the front here. I'm just going to leave that gap there for the moment and add stuff to the tank's butt, which, as we all know, is the technical term. That stuff being this door and grills part, I guess you would call it, or maybe just the hull rear, but there's a few different hull rear bits, so whatever. Above that goes this little grill thing. There's a couple of recesses that this mounts into, so it's pretty easy to get this into the right position. The instructions tell us not to install the upper part of the rear hull for the M5A1 version until a bit later. For the regular M5, there are parts that would go on now, but I'm building the M5A1, so I leave it and turn my attentions to the front of the hull where I install this lower front plate which also has the final drive housings. There is a little bit of lateral play here, so you might need to nudge it a bit so it sits as centred as you can get it. The hatches come next, and these are very simple to install. Something I like about them is that they have interior detail. I mean, it's not super detailed by any stretch, it's just a vision device hanging down from the hatch, but it's a nice little bit of extra detail. Obviously I'm modelling my Stuart button down, but it's still a nice bit of detail. Now for a few little detaily bits. These ones are going to be a bit more visible. We have this pair of lift ring doodads and while they're pretty small, they aren't too hard to get into place, as evidenced by my being able to do so with my fat fingers. They do have a particular way they should go on, and that's pretty easy to see when you're holding the part. The guide pins point downwards at an angle, though you can't really see it in this video. Next comes this pair of rectangular handle grabby things. I don't really know what you would call them. These are easy enough to install, though because of their position, it's easier to install these with tweezers rather than fat fingers. Or even skinny fingers, I would imagine. Then it's time to add the whole machine gun. This is pretty simple to install. You keep saying that because it's true. You do get a little bit of freedom in where this is pointing, but not too much, which is fine. It looks good, and now we're ready to mow down enemy infantry, or fire the machine gun in celebration of doing sick jumps. I then install this headlamp with a brush guard part. This was quite fiddly, in fact I might actually say it was a bit annoying to get into place. It might have been a bit easier without the machine gun already in place, but I have my doubts. I got it into what seems to be a good enough position anyway. The one on the tank's left side is a lot easier to get into place. Both of these are quite chunky parts, which does mean that they won't break easily, and I accept that this is something that happens in gaming kits, but next to the thin little lift rings and things like that, it does look a bit out of place. It's not too bad though. Moving on, it's time to add some shackles. These parts come with the front of the mounting bracket moulded into the shackle, which in some ways makes things a bit easier, but it does also make them a little bit more fiddly than if you were to just slip the shackle part over a bracket part. The ones on the front went on pretty easily, but I had a bit of trouble with the two on the rear. I'm not really sure why that is. It is the same installation, and the same part. I guess it's probably something to do with the mounting point being slightly less accessible. I did eventually get all four shackles into place, but I also found that I kept bumping the rear ones as I continued the build, so maybe watch out for that. Next I install the towing hitch. I can't remember if this is keyed or not, but the little lever thing that sticks out should be facing towards the top. Now it's time to deal with the upper portion of the tank butt. We add this part, which is similar to the one we use for the regular M5 version, but it is different. This part goes into place nice and easy. 
I follow it with this box thing. I'm not really sure what you would call this. We fill the big opening on this with a grill part. That's what makes me not so sure what this thing is. It kind of looks like a stowage box, but it's ventilated. So maybe there's some machinery in there, or maybe it's where they keep their puppy. It looks good though, and that's really what matters. Next, we add these little rear light fitting things. These have a stylish cowling that protrudes out from the hull. They're a little bit fiddly to get into place, and it might actually be a bit easier to do this before adding that rear box thing, but I did get them into place eventually, so I guess it's not such a big deal. Then I add some more lift rings. These go on just as easily as those on the front of the hull did. And there we have it, an M5A1 Stuart hull completed. Obviously there's no turret, and because this isn't the kangaroo version of the tank, we have to build that. So I start by pressing the two halves of the turret together. This actually required quite a bit of force to get all of the parts to go all the way together. It was an unusual amount of force I needed, and I'm glad I didn't add glue before putting these parts together. I can only imagine it would have bonded before I got the parts together, and that would obviously be quite bad. You might make this a bit easier by trimming down the guide pins or something like that, but I used my super strength to force the parts together. Then after testing to make sure the turret would go into its mounting hole and rotate, I added glue. This is one of many examples of why test fitting is good. The turret roof goes into place next, and you might have to apply some pressure, but nowhere near as much as the previous step. The rear wall goes into place next, and again, you will need to apply some pressure. It looks pretty good, very turret reary. That's not a word, is now. It makes sense to add the front of the turret next. This does have keying, but there's a little bit of play in it, so nudging it to get the final position was needed. Next, hatches. These are easy to install like pretty much everything else in this kit. The right hatch part has a vision device with the corresponding internal portion on the inside of the hatch, which is really where you want the internal bits. The other one, having no vision device, has no internal detail. Obviously you could model these open, and you can use whichever of the commander figures you deem appropriate. If you've been around here for a while, you'll probably know that I generally prefer my tanks buttoned down, and as you can see, that's what I've done here. It's a nice looking turret so far, but it's missing some parts that could be kind of important, like the main gun. Before we can install that, we need to put the gun mantlet on. This goes into what I think is a pretty obvious place on the front of the turret. This is nice and easy to do, just make sure that you've got the part the right way up. This is where you choose the gun's elevation, and in this kit you can't have a movable gun, so position the mantlet where you want it now, because you won't be able to change it later without some difficulty. Then it's time for guns. I install the coaxial machine gun first. This goes into the little mounting hole on the tank's right, unless you've put the mantlet on upside down in which case you're doing it wrong. At any rate, this is nice and easy. It probably makes sense that the main gun would come next, and it does. There's a small tab on the side of the gun, and that seems like it should be sticking out on the tank's left, so that's where I position it. I nudge both guns so that they're pointing in pretty much the same direction, because that machine gun is coaxial, and there's a fair bit of play in this, so you'll have to do a bit of eyeballing and nudging. I then add what I think is a searchlight. I'm not sure what else it might be, so it's probably a searchlight. The instructions show this facing forward, and that makes sense to me. I've got no idea if this could swivel around or anything like that, so straight ahead is a safe bet. Next, I add another machine gun. This gun comes with the pintle molded into it, so it's just a simple matter of gluing it onto the side of the turret here, like so. You can probably safely have this pointing in most directions, but straight ahead seemed like a reasonable choice to me. What I think is an antenna mount comes next, and this goes onto the slot on the rear of the turret. Simple enough. And that's the last part. The turret can then be attached to the hull using the simple locking tab mechanism I'm sure you've seen a billion times by now. It was a little bit fiddly to do because I didn't want to grip too tightly on the machine gun area and risk breaking it, but the turret did go on. And I've got to say, it certainly looks like the plastic M5 Stuart in 28mm scale from Warlord Games is now completed. And it looks that way because it is. I'm really happy with how this model has turned out. I think it's a really nice representation of the M5A1. Obviously I'm no expert on M5s or anything. You can say that again! Or anything. 
but it looks to me like a pretty accurate representation. As I said earlier, this is primarily a gaming piece, so it's not going to be, and nor is it intended to be, a hyper-detailed display piece. I'm sure most people who buy a wargaming kit know what they're getting into, but there's always that one person who complains about this sort of thing. For what it is, it's pretty good. It's a nice little tank for your bolt action or other shooty man games, where you might need a tank but not something as heavy as a Sherman or a Cromwell or whatever. I had a lot of fun building this kit. Because this is a wargaming kit, it's obviously going to be designed with ease of construction in mind. The average wargamer probably doesn't really want to spend hours gluing tiny bits of plastic together, and even though I enjoy that, it's not for everybody. And sometimes, a nice simple kit is exactly what the doctor ordered. This kit makes for a nice, relaxing, hassle-free build, and I got it built pretty quickly. I'm pretty sure the build stream was under two hours. Without the distractions and such that are inherent to streaming, you could probably whip this thing together in like 42 seconds. I think you're exaggerating. Maybe just a little bit. It was pretty quick though, and I think you'll agree that the result is quite nice. I particularly like the tracks. They're not quite one piece, but they might as well be, and when you take that into consideration, they look great. They've got a lot of depth to them, and that kind of makes them look like they could be multi-part tracks. I mean multi-part as in more than three. I don't really plan on painting this anytime soon, I've got a bunch of other stuff to get done first, though last week's painting video is certainly one thing removed from the to-do list. When I do paint this, I'm most likely going to paint it for British service, mostly because that's the force I would use it in if I were to use it in a game of bolt action. I think it's going to look really nice whenever that happens, just don't hold your breath for it. You won't have a good time. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to put those in the comments section below. If you happen to have built one of these, or any other cool models and you want to share, why not drop by our friendly Discord community and show us some pictures? We'd love to see what you've done. If you want to watch me build kits like this live on stream, the place to see that would be my Twitch channel, because that's where I stream. The link is in the description below. And if you've not already done so, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, consider becoming a patron if you want to see my videos a bit early, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch next time I'm live. And if you're feeling really helpful, why not share this video with your friends and family, or anybody you think might get something out of it. You can find links to all of my things like social media in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.